Hi beauties, so please don't be mad that I'm using my Hyaluron Pin channel <laughs> for a non-Hyaluron Pin related topic, but I have such a huge love for making videos. I love sharing information. I love educating and I have so many students that I need to share this information with, but I just don't have another platform. So for now, I am just going to be posting one or two little clips on here. Please bear with me while I get my other channel up and running. Permanent makeup is a huge part of my business and I have so many students that need this information so thank you so much for bearing with me while I use this platform to add a few extra clips relating to the other beauty modules I also train with at my academy. Okay ladies, let's have a quick chat about the healing phases of permanent makeup and what is like actually happening to the skin during this healing process. I know training is intense and often, you know, we tell you what to use and what your client should be using, but we don't have that much time and you don't have that much capacity to really absorb this information. So I'm making up a little post and a video about it um, just to give you a little bit of clarity. The idea about this is it's short snippets of information. So this is not a very comprehensive, it's just going to basically give you a good overall indication of what is actually happening during the permanent makeup process. So let's start on day one, immediately after the process, you have gone and created, created thousands and thousands of tiny little pinpricks through um, wounds, basically in the skin through that needle. And now the body's been signaled to tell him that there's trauma. The body knows that with trauma, they need to start the inflammation process or our inflammatory process. Along with that process means we're going to be getting white blood cells and lymphatic fluid to the surface of the area. Now, as good as that is, because obviously that is essential, we need those white blood cells to, to go through to that area. We do tell clients that if they have excess lymphatic fluid, we advise them as part of our aftercare that they wipe away any excess lymphatic fluid for the first few hours for the every well for the every few hours for the first two days so that means that every two to three hours we tell the client if there is any excess fluid gently very gently wipe it away with a damp uh, cotton round or so this will help remove any excess lymphatic fluid which could result in extra scab formation scabs pull out ink then also just quickly touching on this before we move on to the next thing very important that uh, with Premier, we use a Derma Heal ointment. The Derma Heal ointment is an ointment that is not petroleum based. It's not going to occlude the skin. It's going to allow the breathing and it's going to speed up the wound healing process because obviously that's what we've done. We've created a wound and it's important for clients to think of it this way because otherwise they end up touching it, they end up rubbing it, they end up not paying attention to aftercare and that obviously affects their results but also it could open them up to bacterial infections. So we offer them a ointment, which they it's really like an oily ointment consistency. It is not thick. It is not petroleum based. So it allows the breathing. It cannot be applied too thick in order to suffocate the skin. So the clients will use that and this will help aid in their healing process. Then if we look at that, we talk again about the um, lymphatic fluid and the white blood cells. These cells are actually also known as macrophages. They are little cells that roam around the area where we've left the pigment particles and their purpose is to engulf foreign substances. So they will go and find anything that they feel is a threat to the skin and they will usually engulf it, digest it so that it is no longer a threat. They obviously cannot do this to the actual pigments because it contains matter or elements that it cannot be engulfed or digested by the macrophages. And basically that means that in order to protect the rest of the body from it, they will create a little inflammatory process around that particle, isolating it so that it cannot cause or it cannot move to any other parts of the skin. So this little um, Pac-Man is a very good indication of what to expect. So the little uh, macrophage will try to engulf the pigment particle that'll actually keep it in its exact position for as long as it, it can be there. Um, just that you guys better understand what actual process is taking place. Then day two to day three, we go into our second phase. That is the cell division phase. This is where the skin will actually start healing, repairing itself, and also repairing uh, or recovering the blood vessels. Um, it does this by sending fibroblast cells to rebuild the skin. 
uh, very important for you guys to understand that the healthier the client is, the healthier the client's skin is, the quicker and the easier this process will be. Again, just things that can slow it down is poor health, it can be poor skin quality, absolutely dehydration. The more hydrated your client's skin is, the more hydrated she is, the more this is going to help. Um, in South Africa, we have a product called Rehydrate, which contains electrolytes. I think coconut water also contains electrolytes. Um, any type of drink like that will help basically repair any lipid barriers in your skin, helping you to retain more water, keeping the skin hydrated, keeping you hydrated. That will le um, lean you towards quicker healing and better healing. Um, but also, yes, the, the, the clients help. Sometimes it's intrinsic factors that are not in your control, not in your client's control, but all of that can contribute to slower healing, which will usually mean poorer quality healing, more scabbing, slightly more of a patchy result or less color retention. So again, yeah, the poorer the quality of the skin or health, the slower, the more problematic this process can be. All reliant on those fibroblast cells to rebuild the skin tissue um, nicely and in a good environment. So if the client's on good skincare prior to this, that is massively beneficial. Um, clients often, you know, will come in not thinking that their health, they could be on antibiotics that's not a good time to do their permanent makeup because currently they they won't be as hydrated as they should be they won't be optimal health at optimal health so things like that can absolutely affect their results um, and explaining this educating this to your client educating your clients with this information can really help them understand that day three to day seven this goes into the third phase so now it says over the next plus minus seven days the skin will produce new layers the epidermal cells will start to flake off releasing the initial scab not a fun period for your client <laughs> it really can be quite annoying when they're walking around looking like this for two days or so um, but obviously you can see that that, act, that actual third phase is taking place and the initial scabs are detaching falling off um, yeah look, uh, you know resulting in this scabbing process then it does mention the color will be very light during the healing process and to better explain that it is because newly formed collagen fibers act as a shield around the pigment particles so after this plus minus six weeks um, the healing is complete the collagen is then reabsorbed and the true color of the pigment is visible clients often think that the treatment was unsuccessful during week two or day th or week three when they're looking well they're looking like this after day seven or ten but you can see this light 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 brown color underneath the scab that's so light so often the clients feel quite um, disheartened and feel like it was not a successful treatment but educating your client with this will keep them calm and keep them patient because that is unfortunately just a waiting game. We have to let this process pass. Um, and you can also see the color is quite pink in nature as well. And that is also because of the newly formed cells still being quite pink in color themselves. So now it's the waiting game. It's all about being patient. It is essential that the skin is fully healed before we do our touch up. Six weeks after your initial treatment, you'll be able to do the second phase of your treatment. The healthier the skin, the better the results. Hydrate your skin and use professional skincare to optimize your results. Um, yeah, I try to sell permanent makeup as a two phase process because then from the very beginning, clients know that that second treatment is necessary. Obviously, there are occasions where a touch ups aren't necessary. That's great, but I never ever sell that to a client. I always sell this as a two phase process. Um, phase one on the day of the appointment, six weeks later, you do phase two. And here you can also see the before versus the immediately after. This was a student's work during training, just by the way, not mine, very proud of her. <laughs> um, the before photo immediately after the treatments, you can see how intense that looks in comparison to the healed results six weeks later. So you can imagine if you are the client, you go from this to this to that it is quite a roller coaster of emotions so educating your client and constantly or regularly communicating with them can help keep them calm throughout this process i hope that you enjoyed that i hope that it was helpful if you've got any questions relating to this or if you want any of the information we share with clients for aftercare please let me know and i would love to share that with you